Hey guys, welcome back to Six Cards. We're here at Makuhari Mess in Chiba. So we were in January for Tokyo Auto Salon, but today it's a very different show. We're here at Automobile Council. It's a little strange. It's got a weird vibe to it, but there's some really cool cars here. So I want to head down the escalator and show you guys all the cool stuff that's here. If you haven't already, be sure to hit like, subscribe, leave a comment, stay up to date with everything Six Cards. But yeah, without further ado, let's head down. So let's have a look at the Porsche booth here at Automobile Council where we have, I believe, is the Japanese debut of the new 992 GT3 RS. So we saw the actual world debut back at the Quail during Monterey Car Week, and that was finished in a white and green, like, clear RS edition heritage spec. This one is finished in white and red, so I'm not sure if it's also a heritage edition, but it's still cool nonetheless. Obviously, a lot of differences to the last generation. Now we have these huge hood vents, a whole carbon fiber hood there, and a lot more arrow around the sides as well. You can see all of the cooling ducts going in behind the wheels, the front, and the rear. There's a lot going on in this car. That's my favorite feature right there, that new swan neck wing. Let's have a closer look at that. So yeah, the swan neck style is new for the GT3 RS, and you can see how crazy it is. The active arrow right there, so you can obviously change the position of the rear wing on top. That looks absolutely ballistic. And then we see through the back window there, you can see the roll cage that the car comes with. So yeah, I think it's 525 horsepower, um, 9,000 RPM redline, obviously. That's something that the GT3s are very well known for, and there's just so much air on it. It must be absolutely mental to drive this thing. But a lot of really, really cool touches that I like about it. Again, all of the aero, but then you see these louvers. This is not really a new feature, but something that I think just looks so good on the 992 GT3 RS. Pretty remarkable. So yeah, aside from the new GT3 RS, we also have the classic Porsche section, which is really cool. A few standouts, obviously the Carrera GT and the matching 959. Correct me if I'm wrong, believe these are finished in Guards Red, but a couple of absolutely legendary Porsche hypercars sitting right there. And then we've got the OG Carrera RS, which is sort of what the new GT3 RS is paying tribute to. The painted wheels and the painted stripe down the side. So that, as you can see, is a matching spec to the one we saw back at the Quail at Car Week. And then the new GT3 RS that we just saw, pretty similar, just red stripes instead. And then we've got the OG, the classic 901. 911 sitting right next to it. Not bad, not bad. Also take a look at the interior on the Crow GT. It's got the matching red. So cool. Can you really ever get tired of seeing Crow GTs? I don't think so. That is fantastic looking. Oh, look at this. The W124 Mercedes. Look at this. It's just called Long. I'm going to show you why. It's got three doors on it, but it's not necessarily like a limousine because as you can see, all the seats are facing forward and there's a middle row. It, It's so bizarre. It's like a limousine, but it's not. It's almost like um, sitting in a train or a plane or something. And you've got like your first and second class. Oh, so interesting. And as you saw before, the car is plated too, so. Some gangster is driving around Japan in this thing. That is awesome. Look at this concept car mass is brought out an MX81. Head designed by Bertone. So I believe it's like early 80s or late 70s, but as soon as I get a break in the crowd over there, I'm going to show you guys the interior on it. There, look at that feature. Absolutely insane. The swivel chairs, it looks like it's straight out of that 70s show too with the pattern on the back of it. And um, we gotta walk over to the other side and have a look at that steering wheel too because it's looking absolutely outrageous. You guys can see through the reflections there. There's no like indicator columns or anything like that on it. All the buttons are just surrounded around the dash. There's no like actual steering wheel either. So I don't know how this car turns or anything like that. There's a plaque beside it, but it's all Japanese, so good luck to me trying to read that. Okay, so this is actually a brand new car that's been unveiled here at Automobile Council. I had no idea they were doing this at this kind of a show, but this is the AIM EV Sport 01. 
I don't really know too much about this other than the fact that it is a electric sports car, obviously, and it's got some cool little headlights, or I guess daytime rain lights on the front there. Massive Brembo brakes. It looks like it has gullwing doors on the top, just going by the design structure. And I know that it looks actually pretty darn good too. Let's come to the back of it. So all I know is this is a concept version and they are debuting a road car at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, which is coming up fairly soon, I would say. So that's a pretty crazy turnaround time <laughs> between concept and production car. But it looks really interesting be cool to get some new information and stats on the AIM EV Sport 01. Look at the interior. It's a very futuristic looking setup. I love the steering wheel. You can see there's actually cameras on either side of the speedometer and the digital dash. And then if you see the inside of the door, it's a full carbon fiber tub actually. It's actually really impressive and bucket seats by the looks of it too. Not really sure how much they plan on selling this for, but it looks like it could be pretty pricey. <laughs> but it's cool nonetheless. This one classy event, we've got like a jazzy rock concert going behind us. But here, a couple of incredible horses. So, this is a road legal Porsche 962. Um, so I believe it's a Shootman LM. So, I it's tough to say, I don't know if it's one of the original ones that raced at Le Mans, but it is like a certified Shoupon Porsche, and it's absolutely incredible. If you guys watched Top Gear, I believe this car was featured on Top Gear before, as the Road Bully 962, I mean, there can't be too many of them out there, so I have to assume it's the only one. And then, just over here, have a look at it, is, I'm not sure if this one's road going, I'm not sure if it's like, an original or a kit, but the Golf 917K, nevertheless, it looks absolutely incredible. So two amazing historical Le Mans Porsches sitting right next to each other. So as I come around to the side of the 917K, did confirm my suspicion, so it is a replica. I'm not sure what chassis it's built on or anything like that, but it looks darn, darn good. It's really impressive, very, very convincing. And yeah, that's so cool. You can see underneath it, the exhaust, everything, the engine. So, so cool. And it's got this huge fan on top of it. Of course, I'm sure it's pumping a lot of power again. I'm not sure what engine it is, but it's going to need a lot of cooling nevertheless. And some other cool cars here on display. You got the old Alfa Romeo Formula 2. And we've got this Ford powered Chevron V16, sort of a lesser known brand in the sports car racing world, Chevron, but they were a big thing back in the day. It's really cool. Speaking of a big thing in sports car racing, a little more modern, well, and classic too, we've got a couple of Le Mans winners here. We've got the TSO 50 Hybrid, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with because it's just dominated Le Mans for the past few years. And then we've got the big old Bentley four and a half liter blower over there too, which I believe like early 30s, another Le Mans winner. These cars courtesy of the Fuji Motorsport Museum, which is something we definitely have to visit next time we're at Fuji Speedway. <laughs> and again, just to look at the two from the back, see how race cars have evolved. <laughs> this is about like, I don't know, 80, 90 years between these two. I mean, here's a perfect example. We look at the taillights, they're like little tiny lanterns that are hanging off the back. And <laughs> this crazy looking exhaust sticking on the back of it. And obviously the pop up roof. I guess if it were to rain, you would just pull over the side of the track and put it up yourself. And then there's the modern TSO 50 hybrid. So yeah, just a little different looking from the old Bentley blower beside it. That's a really cool comparison there. A couple of classic Nissans I wanted to point out here. Just to show you guys the price of these classic JDM cars and how much they skyrocketed. So for the Fairlady Z432 here, uh, the 432 was the sort of performance variant, or I guess you call it Nismo back in the day. So obviously they're pretty rare, but 40 million, yeah, that's about 400,000 Canadian dollars for an original S30Z. That is absolutely bananas. And you've got the original Skyline GTR over here too, the two door variant, 38.5, so 385,000 Canadian for the OG 2000 GTR. I mean, the condition's great, but 
That is just a lot of dough <laughs> for these classic Nissans. And some other cool cars here too. We've got the old Fair Lady 2000 Roadster. Nice Sports 800. Lots of stuff to see here. Let's keep trucking through Automobile Council. We stood at the top of the stairs there before we came down. This was the booth that stood to me the most. At the center of the room, the Ferrari display. For obvious reasons, there's so many special cars here, especially the yellow one in the back there that we can see, but we'll get to that in a second. We'll work our way up to it. We'll start off with the original, I guess sort of the, what they call the, the start of the Ferrari Hypercar DNA, the 288 GTO. Um, so pretty epic, obviously, to see. Um, what was supposed to be a Group E homologation car, and then obviously Group E roles were abandoned, so they ended up just with having a cool road car in the 288 GTO. So, always nice to see. And we come over to my personal favorite. Don't need to tell you guys again. The F40 speaks for itself. The last car that Enzo oversaw the development for. It's just epic. The best looking Ferrari ever. And we step over here to the V12 hypercar, the Ferrari F50. So, admittedly, something I was never a huge fan of with the design, but it has grown on me over the years. And the car is credited with having a ton of Formula 1 tech in it and putting it into a road car. And yeah, it is, it's pretty darn cool. It's, it's definitely like an iconic, iconic Ferrari, obviously. It's part of the big five as we all know it. And I might as well continue with the rest of the big five and walk over there. So continuing on, this is the last of the big five that we have here. There's no last Ferrari present, but this is the car. It's named after the man himself, the Enzo, and one that I think has aged so so well I and mean, this was like when I was younger this was the car it was just nothing cooler than the Enzo and yeah again I think this design is aged incredibly so good looking and one thing that really stands out to me with the Enzo design is just the nose it's super super cool it's how it starts from the bottom there and works away works its way up all the way to the windshield so reminiscent of like a Formula One car how the nose dips down right into the center it's so so cool and I think it's what they were going for is sort of incorporate some F1 design into a road car sort of reminiscent of the open wheelers well as much as they could with road going regulations but yeah the Enzo is just an all time classic now, just before we get to the yellow car I pointed out before I want to save that one for last I'm going to take a look here at the Ferrari Monza SP1 so SP1 because this one is only a single seater SP2 obviously you take that cover off and reveal the second seat so this is for the person that just wants to drive on the track by themselves and that is such a crazy looking car so i think the best looking of all the modern speedster style cars um, i'm not including the sterling moss in that um conversation because i was a bit older i'm talking about this the elva and the Aston martin vantage speedster i think the monza definitely wins the best design this spec is so cool too it's dark green the yellow heritage stripe across the hood and let's just have a look at the interior there you can see just inside there i guess it's like a little handbag or something or you can put your helmet there there's a tiny little compartment for storage that's about it not really a road trip car <laughs> definitely more of a track car the monza is so cool looking but without further ado let's take a look at the very special yellow ferrari that's sitting just behind me now i've saved the most interesting one for last um, I pointed out before when we started the 288 GTO that we'd be coming around to this one. This is a really, really special car. This is the Ferrari J50. So the reason why it has that name is because it was built to celebrate 50 years of Ferrari in Japan. There's only 10 of these, only for the Japanese market. So you're never going to see one outside of Japan. It's the only place we could see it. When I came to Japan, this was like a bucket list car for me to see the J50. It's so incredible. Let's have a look around and check out the design. So the J50 is built on the same chassis as the 48, but obviously it's incredibly different looking. So many unique features. I love this little line that stretches all the way from the front of the car right back to the side intakes. The hood intakes are really cool too, finished in carbon fiber. And then a really, really interesting thing I didn't know, really notice before, but those, I guess, sort of like headrests on top of the roof. Very cool looking. The roof does come off too, so not in active top I don't believe it is a manual top that you do have to take off yourself but it's so so cool like one of the nicest modern Ferrari designs I would say the J50 you see the interior in this one is really nice that sort of light blue accompanied by the I guess white or cream it's kind of hard to tell 
then the blue stitching through the seats and the headrest. So, so sick. The back of the J50 is so cool. It's sort of reminiscent of the Ferrari Sergio, another incredibly rare limited edition Ferrari. But the J50 is super unique, and I actually love the middle of it. Just sort of this tiny little bit of carbon fiber that the Ferrari badge is taking on. Sort of looks like the last Ferrari. And, oh my god, it's so cool. So again, 50 years of Ferrari in Japan is what it's built for. And Ferrari likes to celebrate its, I guess, its best customer bases. Like the F60 America was built for 60 years of Ferrari in the United States. And now we've got the J50 here. So I'm not sure how many are finished in yellow. Again, there's only 10 of them, so can't be too many. That is such an incredibly special car. Say it ain't so, we've got the harmonica concert breaking out here. Oh! This is an interesting show. <laughs> Automobile Council. There's a lot of like strange booths here at the show, people selling different things, like a lot of books. Um, for some reason, a New York Rangers hockey jersey. <laughs> and we've got whiskey and model cars in the same booth. That's interesting. Hmm. And yeah, it's just some weird art pieces for sale here. It's crazy looking horse. <laughs> They've got these like psychedelic car paintings over here too. And look at this, these little cars made out of seashells. I, I think that's what it is. I don't even know. Look at this Volvo. Oh my word. And yeah, there's some like, weird fossils and tools and stuff you can buy. It. So yeah, that's what I meant when this is like a strange vibe of the show. It's cool. It's just strange. Tucked away at this random booth. This is very sick. Not something I was expecting to see. This is a Veilside 300ZX. And this threw me off. I did not know it was Veilside at first, but you can see here. The 30th anniversary badge, Veilside Z32 wide body kit. Because Veilside generally, like, really, really changes the appearance of the cars with their kits. Like, sometimes it's almost unrecognizable. Like the RX-70 and NSX, quite differently. But this is pretty subdued for them. But you can see it's got the old school wide body kit on it. So the flared fenders, not the bolt-ons. Very cool. I like the side blades, too. And yeah, those hood vents, it's just like a lot of nice touches on this car. I quite like it. Okay guys, so here you have one of the coolest and cleanest rest mods you'll ever see. This is the Amos Futurista Delta. So obviously reimagining the old Lancia Delta. We did see this company's 037 rest mod back at the Quail last year during Car Week. Don't think we've seen a Delta before though. But it's obviously the same philosophy as the 037, full carbon fiber chassis. They bring everything up to modern specs. They give it this nice new wide body too. I'm sure it is an absolute blast drive. It's a two liter four cylinder, 330 horsepower. And uh, the weight, I, I think it's about 1200 kilos. So obviously it's pretty bananas to drive. You can get a lot of cool specs on it too. I love how the front grille is that exposed carbon fiber too. The racing stripe looks nice, and it's got that high drag roof spoiler at the back too for the downforce. So cool. But just beside it, the Delta S4. An incredibly special car. I want to show you guys a closer look at it. So, the Delta S4. I'm sure you guys are all more familiar with the Delta Integral Evo, the smaller one. That's what the Amos is based off of. The Delta S4 is a lot rarer and I, probably a lot more significant because this is what they built to homologate the Delta to Group B specification before the HF Integrale came. So it's a five-speed manual. It's turbo and supercharged to, I believe it's 250 horsepower, but this is the road-going version of the absolutely insane Group B rally car. So Group B um, produced some of the coolest and craziest rally cars of all time. The Delta S4 is part of the lineage. And there's a lot of cool, like, weird features on it. I love these side compartments, all the latches sticking out. And you can see it's obviously a lot bigger than the standard Delta II. You've got these huge intakes sitting at the back there, too. It is such a cool car. Let's have a closer look at the back. So if we look at the back of the Delta S4, you can see how much bigger it is 
compared to the Deltian Grawle, I realize that that is obviously a rest mod, but it's based off of the classy Deltian Grawle, but the one that came first, the S4, much bigger, and obviously the craziest feature of the Delta S4 is clear reflection. There's no back seats. It is mid-engine. You can see that's why it's got the ventilation at the back. So the only other like mid-engine hatchback that I know of that off the top of my head, I'm sure there's others, but it's the Renault Sport Clio V6. The Delta S4 obviously came way before that. So this is a pretty special, significant car. And I'm not sure how many of these they built for homologation for the road. It can't be too many of those. So obviously this thing is worth an insane amount of money. But that is something I was not expecting to see here, the Delta S4. Okay, this is absolutely incredible. We've got the BAC Mono R. So, the BAC Mono, the standard one that came out a while ago, was already absolutely insane, and the Mono R just improves upon that. So, a big new thing with the R is this new side intake here. So, it looks like a Formula 1600 car. It's so cool, but the Mono R now has 342 horsepower, I believe it is. The standard Mono, I believe, at 300, and these things weigh just like 550 kilos, so it's pretty ballistic, obviously. Probably one of the wildest and fastest driving experiences you could ever have, I think. I think the like, power per ton is like over 600 horsepower, which is just insane. And you can see what's really cool about the Mono, everything is exposed, so the axle, the springs, the shocks, dampers. Oh my goodness, it's so cool. And we've got another one over there as well, finished in white. So let's have a look at the white one, I'll show you guys the interior of it. Look at the interior here. You see it's very reminiscent of like a Formula 1 car as I turn the camera around here. You can see the steering with all the different buttons and controls on it. That's pretty much all you have room for. You can't put any buttons on the side, but yeah, it's a full carbon fiber tub. And it's a four cylinder engine too. And it's pumping out, obviously, again, as I said, 340 about horsepower. So, yeah, th this is one of the craziest cars. Of course, as the cars get better, they do get more expensive. So I think they're around like half a million Canadian dollars now. But if I was going to spend this on a track car, 100%, it's going to be the Mono R. It's so cool. It's cool at the Maserati booth. We have the new MC20 Cielo. Cielo. I don't know, don't know Italian, so somebody maybe correct me on the pronunciation if it's wrong, but it's the new convertible open top version of the MC20. It's already a fantastic looking car and looks even cooler, I think, with the top down. Suits it really, really well. And this paint is so nice. It's sort of like a bluish silver, but then it has like a bit of pink in it as you shift through the light. It's so interesting. And then just behind that, they've got a Mistral Spider, sort of paying homage to their open top cars. Nice little display here. And so it's purple, pink, Bentley Turbo RL. Like, there's so many interesting and strange cars here. The whole show feels like you're walking through like different uh, Gran Turismo menu books, sort of. Just the way all these different collections of cars are strangely curated together. You get the music playing in the background, all these like weird little stalls here too. The Morgan Three Wheeler over there, the lowest 211. But um, yeah, first time in automobile council for me, and this is definitely a hit in my book. This is awesome. So many interesting, cool cars to see. I've had a blast here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, guys, I guess that's a wrap on Automobile Council 2023 in Chiba, Japan. So, tons and tons of cool cars that we saw. Some oddballs too, just had a little bit of everything, a Beatles cover band out of nowhere. Uh, it was pretty interesting. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe, leave a like, comment, all that jazz. I'll see you guys next time on Six Cars.